This is a 2022 Leaf S Plus with a 62 kilowatt hour battery that we just pulled out of here. And I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but um, what I did was I used the directions from Dalla the Great to wire in um, this uh, OBD2 adapter, Bluetooth adapter and it worked great and uh, I'll post the uh, state of health and percent state of charge it uh, gives me great confidence now that what we're gonna do here with the swap is gonna actually work out so the other thing I did was uh, using also Dalla's excellent instructions is 3d printed out this uh, can adapter here's what it looks like outside of the little Box and I flashed it using the instructions and programming. I believe it was version 4.23 uh, from Dalla's repositories on GitHub. So uh, I, this is a super great thing to do. Uh, highly recommend you do that if you're going to purchase one of these batteries. Uh, you can use this to test to see whether it's good or not before you make the purchase. And this one is good thank goodness uh the car only had i believe it was ten thousand miles on it or something like that and uh 97 state of health so phew got lucky there i guess i'll just give a, a little demo i just plugged it oops plugged the battery in oh no it's got twelve thousand miles twelve thousand and seventy two miles it didn't come with a key so i can't get this thing to fire up obviously but it's it been set off, you know, the crash detection has been set off, and I can't reset it without the key, apparently. So, kind of out of luck there, and it's just not worth it. I'm going to strip this motor out of here and uh, this entire thing and hopefully use it in a, a repower project at some point. But that's for when I have time, ha, ha, ha. Not that I ever have any time, but this car has been thoroughly crashed. It went into the ditch, and uh, it's dead. D-E-D -E -D dead. <laughs> a lot of those things are still good on it, though. Unfortunately, the main radiator broke during the crash. There's a crack in it. Where was that? Right down here. That's cracked off right there. Otherwise, that radiator would be good. Um, air conditioning condenser, I believe, is still good so maybe i could do something with that um anyhow just wanted to give a little quick update on that too another thing i did was i pulled the springs out of this uh 2022 and of course the uh skid plate or the air deflector dams are going to be replaced when we put this battery into the 2013 uh, and then i just jammed a couple pieces of wood up in there so this thing looks like a, a high rider but it's <laughs> it won't move because there's pieces of wood wedged in there right now and this is our 2013 uh, nissan leaf s model just the base model uh had we bought it in 2015 it had 12,000 miles on it and i think we no 17,000 miles on it we paid ten thousand dollars for it so we've had it since 2015 for ten thousand, and we paid eight thousand for the crashed car, plus you know miscellaneous stuff to do this conversion. I would say we're at probably you know just under nineteen thousand total. Hopefully, this car will have you know over two hundred miles of range when this project is done. This uh, car was manufactured in August of twenty thirteen, and it has the Lizard chemistry battery. And I'd say it's done pretty well. Now it's got over 80,000 miles on it, and there's still how many bars? I don't know. I'd have to count them. It's been very reliable. Uh, just in the cold, as it is now, it uh, really drops in range, and um, it's beginning to get a little uncomfortable to drive it on our normal route. That's why we're going to do this conversion. The rest of the car is in really good shape. Haven't had anything go wrong with it yet. Um, knock on wood. That Nothing does go wrong with it after we do the swap, but uh, my wife loves this car, absolutely loves this car, and wants to keep it uh, for a long, long time. So that's what we're going to try to do. 
Well, it served us well since 2015. This is a 2013, um, August of 2013 build Nissan Leaf that we bought in 2015. This is the final mileage uh, that it's going to be before I pull the battery out of it. So I just wanted to note that. And uh, took a few readings off of Leaf Spy Pro to um, make sure that they knew that uh, what the state of health is if I end up selling that battery or something like that. But I'm slow charging it, trickle charging it right now, just with a level one charger to get it topped up so that there's a little bit of time, as much time remaining as possible before I figure out what to do with the thing. Um, still has about 60 miles worth of charge remaining. Um, so, all right, this is it. It's been a good run on this battery. Brought her baby home from the hospital after she was born, so many thanks. Trying to document well what we got going on. We got those 22 ton RV jacks uh, setting this thing up. So we got some good clearance now, I'll be able to work on it. Got to take off the uh, shrouds now. One question that never gets answered when you're doing a LEAF 62 kilowatt hour battery swap is how much uh, difference is there between the springs on a 24 kilowatt hour battery pack car and the 62. So I'm gonna find out right now. How much difference is there? So since we're working with a metric vehicle, I'm using the metric scale, 13 millimeters on the current that was weird, I don't know why it dropped off, but... And on the new springs, it is 13.7 millimeters, so 0.7 millimeters thicker on the 62 kilowatt pack springs. Now we know. All right, there it is, she's topped off. Got three solid bars across the top, so she's topped up for the last time. Good job, little battery. Out with the old and with the new, I replaced the uh, bearing blocks, whatever you call those. I have no idea what you call these little rubber bits that go in between. Now, the secret to this whole thing is use a little piece of wood and get it underneath this part, the frame, and then when you get just the right tension on it, this bolt just absolutely slides out with zero effort. And it's 18 millimeter both sides. So I just used a box end on this end and impact on that end and I just zipped right out of there but be sure you got it um now here's another trick don't let it fall like when you, you have to do both sides you have to remove both so the right side is still off and if you let it fall then it'll pull on these brake lines and could destroy your brake line so don't let this thing fall keep some tension on this and some pressure so this whole linkage doesn't go swinging down out of control and make more work for you than you really intended on doing. But that's the new, well, that's the 2022 spring in place on the 2013 body. Oh, I have all the shrouds taken off already too. This is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I'm gonna try to show how you get this thing back up in here. So I just moved the jack back over. This is moving sort of wobbling free, so just make sure it doesn't get bound up. When you start raising it up, if I were smarter, man, I would be replacing these shocks at the same time, but I just don't have time for that right now. See how I got bound up? Just turn it a little bit. Get it in there. Jack, jack, jack. And then at a certain point, this will fit that hole perfectly. Where did I put the bolt? Oh boy. We have that problem. Where did that bolt go? The new springs are in place. This whole job took less than a half an hour. That was really not bad. Of course, you have to factor in the jacking it up and everything like that, but I think it went very well. Other questions that I had before I embarked on this road are, is it, are the connectors going to work? Well, yeah, this one is a 2013 model with the, uh, the AZE-0, I guess model which has this was the, one of the first ones or first months these were produced that have the proper style connector so that's this is the 2013 august production date and here is the 2022 battery it has the exact same connectors i made this dongle 
to uh, make an OBD2 connector, highly, highly recommend doing that. If you're going to be buying one of these batteries, go look at it, plug the sucker in, and see um, what the state of health is on it. It's really not that difficult to make. You should be able to figure it out. This is the most difficult part of this whole project, probably, is first you got to pull power off of um, the uh, OBD2 port under here. So you pop this panel off, pull the port out, and then the, the yellow wire is uh, positive 12 volts. Run a wire from that through here. Ties into the two red wires on uh, the little can controller and then uh, I ran a ground up to this screw that everybody seems to use because it goes to the frame. Ran the ground to the two black wires going in and then you got to dig in here and it's the plug that goes into this left hand port not the right hand port next to it but you clip the blue and the green wires and then to the vehicle side goes the yellow and the blue wire and to the battery side goes the purple and the green. So you can sort of see how the color codes work out there. Green to purple, blue to green. And up top, blue to blue, that's easy. And then green to yellow. So that's according to this uh, wiring in the hardware section that um, Dala has put on his website. Today is install day. I made these bars according to the plans. On Dalla's uh, website, there's a SketchUp dimensional drawing of these um, that you can use to follow. So obviously one goes on each side of these rails. It makes up for the difference in the height. See how that one is, has a raised portion and that doesn't? That's what we're working on right now. I'm recording? All right. We're both sort of okay. recording the same thing here. But it's um, this is the hanger difference uh, and the difference in the height between the... Uh, 24 kilowatt hour pack and the 62 kilowatt hour pack this one over on the left is the 62 kilowatt pack and you see how it hangs down about an inch and a half that's the same distance that's being made up for by that that rail in there and uh, so we got to take off these hangers and put the 20 the new ones on the one, the ones that drop it down a couple more inches all so, right go ahead. go ahead greg all right uh battery's been installed can bus adapter module has been installed um, now it's time for the moment of truth. Keys in it, 12 volts, everything's hooked up. Here we go, brake, foot on brake, and contact. What did that say? So we got turtle mode engaged. So and a couple warning messages. All right, and so a battery light on. Battery's low, so uh, I would turn it off. I'm gonna turn it off. It won't turn off. I was pushing on the brake. I'm gonna push on the brake again. Well, that's an interesting trick, isn't it? Yeah. Take your foot off the brake. Okay, that did it. Okay. Foot back on brake. And no, I still have turtle mode engaged. A bunch of warnings. All right, I've seen this before, and I'll tell you what I think it is. Okay. Take your foot off the brake. Foot off brake. Put it on. Put it on. All right, so you got that engaged. It could be a neutral lock switch uh, that gives issues sometimes. So um, I know what's wrong. What? We forgot to put the high voltage disconnect in. back there between the seats <laughs> okay game off okay now we got the high voltage disconnect put in so let's try <laughs> let's try this again foot on brake and contact well, that sounds good turtle mode is still engaged but we have less warning lights the battery is Going. We got turtle mode and a warning. So I'm going to turn it off and try it again. 
All right, so it turns off this time with the brake pedal. So yeah. Did you use the brake pedal to turn it off? I did not. I had my foot off the brake. I'll turn back on. Right now. Still have turtle mode and a warning. So try to use your brake to turn it off. Use brake and turn off. All right, that did it. All right, hit it. Turn it on without the pedal. Without the pedal. I don't think it will. It doesn't work. It won't even go into no. accessory mode? No. All right, there it goes. All right. Now your power steering should go off when you hit the brake. Okay. No. I mean, when you hit the brake and hit the start button. Oh. So it's on. It's just in turtle mode. Now, see if it'll actually go on drive. Yeah, it does. It's rolling, right? Try reverse. Yeah. It is working. All right. Could it be turtle mode because you need to charge it? Maybe. I think that's the next step is to try that. Because it did have a low battery warning, so it shouldn't be... It should be turtle mode. Turtle right? mode, though. But it could be because it's kind of off. It's not calibrated. Yeah. Well, we'll plug it in and see what happens. How about that? All right. All right. We're very near success. We've um, used Least Spy Pro to clear all the codes, and it still is in turtle mode, and we have a occasional flashing light of the uh, charger. So we're trying to figure that out. Not quite sure what's going on with that yet. Success lives here. We had to replace the CAN bus controller with the second one, which I'm glad I ordered more than one. Otherwise, you wouldn't have any working vehicle right now. Anyhow, we're at 101 miles range and still on the second flashing light. So there should be a lot more to go. Well, can't wait to see what it's going to be tomorrow morning. Here's the moment of truth. We get to see how many miles we have on a full charge on the 62 kilowatt pack. Ready? Wow. Well, that'll do it. Um, <laughs> that's a, a huge change. It was 65 miles and now it's uh, 250. So, okay. Uh, fantastic. I got to take some screenshots now of the Leaf Spy Pro to see um, if we have any kind of problems with the battery, with the uh, voltages, or the differential between the voltages, and fingers crossed. All right, just finished buttoning her up. Gave it a, a little tidying here and put all the panels back in place. And now, make sure everything still works. 